The Promise of Eden, a devotional for the seasons of Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany, produced by Northside Church. Thursday, December 29th, the fifth day of Christmas. Let us pray. Lord, let there be peace. Teach our hearts to yearn for it and our hands to work towards it. Cultivate peace in our imagination so that we may grow it in the gardens of our lives. Let there be peace on earth, Lord, and let it begin with me. Amen. Our scripture passage today comes from Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. It will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Have you ever witnessed a plant miraculously come back to life after being destroyed? Whether by wildlife or by our own negligence, we tend to think that a plant has died when the green leafy part of it disappears. But the roots are actually the most important part of the plant. Underground and relatively invisible to the human eye, it is the roots that dictate the life of the plant. If the root system is alive, the plant can grow. So our first question for today is about uh, how we can get distracted by the green and leafy parts of life, the things that make us look and feel alive. Um, but let's think about for a minute, how do, we, how do we tend to the things that are the roots, like the more important things? Well, what are the roots of a human being? In order to tend to them, we have to like know what they are, right? I think the roots are things like our spiritual well-being, right? Our emotional well-being, our mental health, like things like that. Our our physical bodies, right? You know, we we tend to separate out, you know, our spirit and our mind. You talk about this a lot, James. And but you know, the reality is is that we're all packaged up into this one body, and the body is what has to carry carry these things around as we have to take care of the body. You know, my, my classic example of, you know, taking care of yourself is, you know, a lot of times we think about self care as, you know, pouring a glass of wine and watching Netflix and that's great. You know, you know, it's, it's good to relax. That's important. Right, right, you know, yeah. those are Rest, good things. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. This is, but sometimes self care means doing the dishes. Sometimes it means paying the bills. Sometimes it means going for a run. Sometimes it means eating the thing that is, you know, not as fun because it's healthy for us, you know? And so it's those things that keep us alive and sharp and, you know, being our best selves, like being the creature that God has created us to be. So it's the work of being healthy. I think so. So you listed a lot of things that are uh, the roots, I guess, or the work of, of being healthy on a physical level or maybe even a psychological level, but spiritually. Right. So, you know, things like prayer, right? You know, it's important, you know, go to church, do all these things, like show up and be there. But we've also got to take care of the things like inside of us. You know, sometimes we can, I think sometimes you do have to fake it till you make it. Um, and we could have a whole conversation about that. But um, it's, while it is important to do the things and outwardly do the things that make up being a Christian, you have to do the inward things too, right? Tend to the roots. Like we have to be in an actual relationship with God, not just going through the motions. Whatever that looks like for you. Yeah, no, I think that's right. And in fact, you could you can quote John Wesley on that fake it till you make it thing because that's that was his whole thing. Like uh, the practices of being a Christian are really important, even if you're not feeling it. Yeah. Right. So a lot of times we focus on uh, is this making me feel good? Right. Mm -hmm. We do that in our in our worldly lives all the time, right? You know, is is this meal making me feel good? Is this uh, TV show I'm watching making me feel good? And we translate that over into the spiritual world, where is this worship service making me feel good, or is right. this you know? And the thing is, with our spiritual practices, it is not about how you feel. It is about simply being faithful to do the work. So. Uh, tending to the roots of our spiritual life might mean doing the practices, prayer, reading the Bible, going to worship, coming to Sunday school, uh, that, you know, we may not get any feeling out of it, but that it's actually 
an essential part of tending to the things that actually produce life in us like spiritually. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think that's a great example because you can talk about, you know, the green shiny leaves in the sense of like doing the things. But, you know, so think about the, the last time that you said, well, I didn't really get anything out of church, you know, today. You know, well, g- did you pray before you go in, before you went in? Did you take a minute to prepare your heart and, and ask God to, to be there? You know, I mean, I'm, I'm notorious for this, right? Oh, well, I mean, yeah, sure. It was a good Sunday, whatever, but uh, okay. Well, Elizabeth, did you, did you pray? Did you ask God? Did you invite God in? Cause I think that can make all the difference in the world. So that I think is another example of roots versus, you know, getting distracted by the shiny leaves. The shiny leaves. <laughs> I like that. I like that idea of shiny leaves. You're right though. Like, uh, preparing yourself. Um, whether it is, you know, uh, preparing yourself for worship in the sense of like, are you showing up with the right mindset or yeah. heart set? Is that a word? I don't know, but it is uh, now, it is now. Uh, showing up with the, the right attitude, you know, the right mindset that, that, uh, that you expect something to happen mm-hmm. even. Right. Um, it is so easy for us to fall into the, the, you know, I'm, I'm at church every Sunday. I'm, you know, I'm doing, I'm going through all the motions. I'm doing all the things and, uh, eventually falling into this kind of like, this is just routine. It's ritual. It's not, I don't actually expect anything to happen. If right. it, but if you do the work, if you, if you engage in the practices, right, the, the practices of faith, um, to go back to your phrase, you know, faking it until you make it. And it's really not faking it though is the thing like going through those practices are really important what is fake is the feeling oh yeah that's a good point it's a good distinction right so like if you if you are going through the practices of faith thinking that it's all about how i feel rather than this is just what i'm called to do then you get into that place where chaos can can find the cracks, you know, and the, and chaos and darkness can, can grab onto you, you know, because you, if you're, if you're able to be faithful when things are good and everything feels good, then you can have confidence when things are bad, that, that it, it's just a season. It's just winter, you know, it's mm-hmm. just fall. And, and that God is still active and working in those moments. Um, Brene Brown, um, talks about how we often, uh, we think of faith as an epidural and really we should be thinking about faith as a midwife, right? Like we want faith to make us feel good. We want our church to make us feel good. That's exactly what you're talking about. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not what God intended. Like God intended faith, you know, God had sent Christ here to be with us to say, push, You know, like this is push through like this is, you know, I'm going to stand here. I'm going to hold your hand. This is not going to be easy. You know, like it's a midwife. It's not an epidural. I like that a lot. You know, the idea of epidural. I don't know anything about childbirth other than, you know, I I witnessed a child being born, but that was a whole different. You know more than me. (laughs) I was present at the birth of a child, but that was myself. So, you know, I wasn't really conscious for that. But an epidural is 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 you're trying to remove the pain of the situation. You're trying to remove the pain of a creation of a new life, mm-hmm. right? But there's, but faith is 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 the person who pushes you through that, and and also like tells you to push the baby out, right? Yeah. Uh, this uh, situation where people are turning to faith, they're turning to religion more so than faith, as a way to kind of dull the pain of life, mm-hmm. it, as a way of dulling and and removing the things that all humans have to go through in order to to find true order and meaning and and when christianity becomes that like when our faith becomes that then we've lost something right we we've taken the epidural mm-hmm. rather than seeing faith for what it is which is a dance and constant struggle with existence god is not trying to make our life easier he is trying to make our life meaningful and that really is the order. That is the order that God spoke into existence with the garden, with the light, with all of these things. The primary purpose of our faith is to give us meaning as those who are being, uh, who were created in the image of God, and those who are being restored into that same image as we grow, as the garden of our faith grows in our heart. Absolutely. 
I, um, I'm still reading Scott Erickson's Advent devotional and, uh, he talks about how, you know, we have all these beautiful images of Christ as a baby and, you know, images of Mary and they're, you know, they're beautiful, right? Like, and, and it should, these things should be sacred. These things should be holy. Right. Um, but you know, Mary and Jesus, right? Like at one point in her experience, like she had third trimester heartburn, right? You know, like it's, you know, she had morning sickness, right? And, you know, and little baby Jesus came out screaming and all, you know, Scott talks about, um, you know, the little alien baby, you know, he's like, when kids first come out, they're not cute, right? Well, no matter what anyone's going to tell you, you know, they've just been jammed through a birth canal. Like they're it's not, true. right. And yeah. so, you know, so yes, you know, we have these sanitized images and we should keep these things holy, you know, like there is a purpose behind cleaning up this, this story, right. You know, but let's not remember, let, let's not clean it up so much that we completely forget that there wasn't humanity in this experience, right. There was, you know, there was pain here, there was, and then this is how God came to us. And that is just, yeah. you know, we've said this already, but I just, I just can't, I don't think you can get enough of that. I don't think you can hear that enough. And and you could talk about, you know, the rest of the picture, right? You know, I, we have this, at least I do. I imagine it's a cultural, you know, thing that it's just beautiful and peaceful and everything's magical. And, you know, it's just this, this, everything you like, the orchestral music is playing in the background. But I mean, come on, like this angel appeared appeared to these shepherds they're freaking out you know they're running off to tell them they don't know how to deal with this angels are terrifying right you know uh, there's barn animals so jesus gets born he's screaming his head off the cow's probably mooing you know like it's just you know, the shepherds they're dirty you know it's just this this is it's chaos it's chaos but it, that is how christ comes to us in the middle of this chaos you have this beautiful boy this beautiful baby that was born into this chaos and he God is no less majestic because of it. In a way, and, and as a way of, of looking forward to the work that we're going to do during Lent, I mean, God uses the chaos of, of human life to bring redemption. And there is uh, not something magical about that, but something mystical, something holy Yeah. about that. Yeah. Well, and so this is another thing too. Like, I love this time of year. I love the tradition of celebrating the 12 days of Christmas because for me, this time period is when I find the most peace. I find the most um, calm, right? I can really appreciate the season for what it is because the chaos is over, right? So it's- Like the worldly chaos. Right, the worldly chaos is over, you know? The presents have been open. You're not trying to like rush and figure out the logistics of a party or, you know, like getting the right gift, wrapping it and doing all the things. Like the rush is over and this is the time for me that is the most holy because, I mean, not everyone does this, but I still have my Christmas tree up and I will continue celebrating Christmas until Epiphany because that's just how it's supposed to go. And I- you can fully you can fully enjoy it no i like that and and that's that is why uh uh, practicing again these roots right this this practice of the 12 days of christmas one of the roots of our faith is a way of being countercultural. like it's, it's a way of saying you know just because target doesn't have any more christmas sales doesn't mean that we aren't still celebrating the birth of jesus christ i love it that's a good word merry christmas everybody